All right, there we are back. So let's continue now that we've escaped and are with what is supposedly a friend. A well-timed block puts your enemy of balance. Hidden in an old bar on the river, your new allies have plans to share with you. Meet with the loyalists in our circle to learn what they've got in mind. So this is kind of a light motif of the game, I guess. Having Pitt's pub closed for business, half the district marked off is dead for the plague. We're right under the Lord Regent's nose, and he don't know a thing. Of course, if anyone finds out what we're up to, the watch will break in with swords drawn. And now that you've escaped. Lord Regent's going to be tearing the city apart. Take you up to meet Admiral Havelock and the rest of the Lordists. The Admiral's a man to be reckoned with. If anyone can help you find that missing girl, Lady Emily, and clear your name, he can. You can see how at the edges of technology they were. I expect they're hard at work in there. Best join them. They'll help you get whoever really killed the Empress. I'm sure the Admiral is anxious to meet you. It wasn't easy getting you here. I wouldn't hang about if I were you. From what I understand, time's getting short. So he pulled that cigar out of his belly, basically. <laughs> okay, so these motorized uh, boats are apparently... Um, it's nice to see there in this early version of the game as well. Um, so that comes back in the other game. It's common that you get from location A to location B that way. I mean, it's a really clever bit of game design to say, hey, we'll make it a country of islands and with canals and bays in between the various locations so that they can, you know, they don't have to make it possible for you to run back and forth between every location. It's always easier in game design if each location that you're in is uh, secluded in itself, you know. Um, because then, you know, you can test it as its own part and just have to make sure that you can get from the start to the end and that the end is connected to the next place and the start is connected to the previous place and that's it. You don't have to figure out that, you know, if you do thing A in location A first, then walk over into location B, which you're really not supposed to be doing yet, um, do thing B there, then go back to location A and do thing C there, then suddenly you've got yourself locked up because you've closed the door and you can't get to another location or something. You know, so it's always a little... Um, uh, it's always more difficult to design a game like that, whereas if you're just uh if if you just have slid, little islands then there's not really any any problem to deal with the spot seems weirdly familiar don't know if i've seen someone play a little bit in this location like this swamp location and walking around in it not like here they don't really let me i mean i can go in the water i guess but um whoops um but i don't think i'm supposed to go anywhere near here yet ouch 
Um, okay, bad fish. <laughs> That's rude. Oh, okay, while swimming I can't fight. Interesting. Dunwall brand whiskey. He smells like harbor water. And he has fish bites. What kind of an idiot did you bring here who didn't even know there will be aggressive fish in the water? Okay. Either that machine <coughs> machine is broken or or someone is uh, using a belt sander in there or something. I think I don't know if Attention all citizens. Curfew extends from sundown to sunrise unless you are otherwise authorized. Violators will be subject to interrogation and detained when necessary. Remember, the boldest measures are the safest. Okay, what's this? We can't doesn't look like uh, I guess it's a locked for something maybe for later I guess someone had watchdogs there the hound oh right the hound pits so that's the spot Copper wire, that's nice. Okay, I'm kind of suspecting that they want us to, or that they will let us explore more here. Ooh, crown graffiti. That's a bit obvious. Like, where would the loyalists be hiding? Well, maybe in that big building with the crown on it? I don't know if I've watched someone play here a little bit and walk around or if I actually when I got the game played this far I mean I've been taking a leisurely stroll exploring and things and I might have been faster the last time the Lord Regent is a shriveled prick and a liar ooh that's a bit dangerous Okay, who are these people? Blood from the eyes. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to go out there, so let's save here. Open that door. Welcome to the Hound Pit Pub, sir. How may I help? Hello, sir. I am Wallace, and this is Cecilia. We have been informed of your arrival, and will do our best to stay out of your way while you conduct your business. Yes, Lydia is a servant here as well. Oh, okay, I guess that's the intended entrance. Or this one. So it's starting at last, Admiral. We found our man. Even after six months, flicked out like it was nothing. Yes, 
Not surprising. He was the personal bodyguard of the Empress. You've heard the stories. Yes, I have. It still amazes me that someone could get to the Empress and young Lady Emily. No one knows the real story, Trevor. We all have our suspicions. We'll know the truth in time. He's strong and quick. But I hope he understands subtlety as well. This isn't one of your fancy dress parties. The reality is that we need men killed. Have you ever killed a man? Only with my whip. But it's a fair point, as always. He'll be here soon, and I'm looking forward to meeting him. Have you ever killed a man only with my wit? So the question is, did he just mean, oh, I delivered a sick burn occasionally? Or does he mean, like, you know, he, you know, tricked someone into killing themselves or something, you know, like, or, you know, made someone seem disloyal and got them killed by the watch that way? Interesting. Okay, we can go down there. And up here, I guess. I guess we should explore at some point, but I think I want to drive on the story first. Wouldn't be fair, right? We can continue this later, Lord Pendleton. The man of the hour is here. Corvo, I'm Admiral Havelock, a true servant of the Empire, like you. Until the Lord Regent purged those of us who wouldn't recognize his claim on the throne. And I'm Lord Trevor Pendleton. I represent the nobility in our little group. But we all act as equals here at the Hound Pits pub. This is a momentous occasion, Corvo. I'm going to come out with you. We've been building a coalition of loyalists, aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny and restoring the throne. At risk of execution, we're committed to finding young Lady Emily and seeing her crowned as Empress. We've got big plans, but we can't do any of it without you. We need your skills, your ability in a fight, and in helping us, we're going to help you destroy the men who murdered the Empress. Sorry, you must be exhausted. We can discuss this further after you've recovered, but before you retire, you should introduce yourself to Piero. He's challenging at times. But his industrious mind buys him that right. Yes. Piero's as much an artist as a technician. He's going to be crafting the gear you'll need. Go talk to him, and then get some sleep. We can talk more when you've rested. Good to have you with us, Corvo. Nothing against the others, but there's no substitute for a man who's done his service for the Crown. Have you talked to Piero yet? He made the weapons we left for you on your way out of Coleridge Prison. Go see him when you can. You don't know what it means to work with a man who stood at the Empress's right hand. We can't bring her back, but at least we have the man she trusted most. And maybe we can help you right some of the wrongs done to you. This bar is mine, but please, treat it as your home. Piero <laughs> still wants a word with you. He's, well, he's not a diplomat, but he's a brilliant man. Samuel is a blessing. Without him, we couldn't navigate the waters of the river at night. We keep our lights low to avoid prying eyes. What I wouldn't give to be back at sea. I told him I'd be damned if I sail under a usurper's flag. You should have seen their faces. Curse the Lord Regent. I might have taken to piracy after the Navy, but then inspiration struck me, and I started assembling our little group here. The Empire was built on its Navy. Never forget that. I served proudly until the bureaucrats took over. Pendleton's a good man. He used to be close to that snake, the Lord Regent himself. Don't be fooled by the fact that Pendleton's a noble, though. Not all of them are terrible. Pendleton kind of looks... I bought this bar years ago. There were some happy times here before the plague hit the city. Before the Empress was killed and everything went to shit. We'll make it right again, together. 
Pendleton looks like kind of a character from the second game, but I think that was someone with a different name. River Crust. Okay, we've talked all we can to him, I guess. Oh, there are some... Let's see. Whoops. What? Why did they teleport me? Go tartlet. Mm, num, 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 num. That sounds delicious and it gives back health. Alright, I think we've got it all. I mean that that pub is uh, very much just an English pub. It's gonna you can tell that their idea was just basically take a cliche image of the UK and steampunk it up a little but it it's a nice it's a gorgeous setting it's it works oh so Piero is ah the guy we heard make all the noise I'll be crafting your weapons and gear. All custom work. For you, I will create the tools of a master assassin. No! This cannot happen now. The tank of whale oil is running. Will you get a new tank from upstairs, please, while I hold this in place? Be careful. Oil's unstable. When it explodes, there's a Terrible mess. <laughs> Terrible mess, okay. That's a nice tutorial as well. That there's nothing really that they tell you about the whale oil in the second game that much. Whale oil refilling station. Sokolov no longer has the upper hand with regard to supplies of whale oil. The good admiral has paid for the installation of my own system which will enable me to work in this place. The oil tank dispenser, when activated, will produce an empty vessel for filling. When the empty tank is held near the oil tank refill pump, the magnetic attractor should take the tank and lock it in the correct configuration. Using the levo will begin the refilling process. Once refilling is completed, the tank can be removed and placed in service. Extreme caution must be used in handling the full tanks. They are quite unstable. The system is sound and well engineered. It appears that the Greaves Oil Company has done something correctly. For once. <laughs> whale oil processing. Excerpt from the founder of the Graves Whale House by Ebenezer Graves. Out at sea, they secure the beast with hooks, with lines cast from the main ship and from several smaller boats. Buoys keep the whale from diving deep. Once it's caught, a larger hook is driven through the tail, which is used to hoist the creature up through the chute. They moan and bellow for some time as the men get them onto the deck, then lift them into the scaffolding overhead. The ship adjusts its prow and returns to port in Dunwall, where the crew works on the great creature, slicing off the fattiest parts while it still lives. <sighs> that doesn't sound good. Whale vivisection. Excerpt from the notes of a natural philosopher aboard a whaling ship. Remarkably, each specimen I had the pleasure of studying during the voyage possessed some minor variants in physiology. On the second leg of the trip, east of Tivia, the crew hauled aboard a female, some 42 foot in length. I estimate she weighed 35 tons, and the ship sat low, rocking side to side through the night with her thrashing. By candlelight I took her apart, sketching and taking notes. Against her bellowing I could cut into the mass of tentacles around her mouth. 
Within I found row upon row of teeth and a baleen running along the upper jaw. Through this broom-like structure I assume she filtered food from the water that was too small to be chewed. Okay, so their whales are a little different, I guess, with tentacles in the mouth and teeth. I think regular whales don't have teeth, do they? I think they just filter plankton from the ocean. Dead counter responsibilities. Except from a manual on new city watch procedures. Commissioned by the Lord Regent in the face of the growing plague crisis, the dead counter is a position that will only be given to officers, usually of junior or middle grades. In most matters of edict or curfew enforcement, these officers will defer to the acting officer on duty. However, any dead counter will have command in situations related to the plague and the handling of the dead, including those with late-stage plague symptoms called weepers in common parlance. Starting in the month of rain, interested officers may apply for the test and, if accepted, for the two-week training tour. Pay will be administered in coin and rations of elixir at one and one-half normal pay grade. Okay, so you get more elixir if you are... Uh, if you're volunteer for this dead counter position I guess but that doesn't sound really like a lucrative job otherwise it sounds like you know handling the dangerous parts of the job the golden cat the finest ladies in all the isles skilled in the sensual arts aged whiskey of renown. Okay. The start of the description sounded almost like a description of a brothel, and then it says aged whiskey of renown. So either it's a brothel with a good drink selection, or it is uh, a uh, a whiskey distillery or something like that. The theme. Piero's Remedy, known to stop sickness and to improve the emotional energy of women. Cures torpid liver and chest colds. Okay, so I guess Piero has a health elixir as well. Maybe not quite as good. As the one Sokolov has. Piero's request is denied. Piero, no, I will not sign off on these purchases. A bag of powdered crystal, Tivian ore? What's wrong with the metals and crystal? King sparrow feathers. If you need feathers, sacrifice your own pillow. Maybe at the academy everything you needed was paid for by tariff and handed out willy-nilly, but this is my bar or what's left of it. And we're operating on a budget. We're running low on oil, food, elixir, building materials and everything else, so you've got to slow down. While I'm footing the bill, I will not approve your purchases unless they're absolutely required. No more copper wire or special herbs. If you need those things, go out and scavenge them. Half the city is in ruins, so no one is going to miss any of the odd crap you seem to need. Admiral Havelock. Just get it near the receptacle. Magnetism will do the rest. Second solution. Excerpt from a series of newspaper articles from prominent natural philosophers by Piero Joplin. It is through no fault of my fault of my own that the average citizen has expressed a preference for Sokolov's elixir over my own formula, sold as Piero's remedy, a name I did not choose, if you must know the truth. The public has spoken its usual message of idiocy, spending their coin as a means of selecting Sokolov's formula over mine, which I believe to be equal if not superior. Much has been made over the popularity of these concoctions as a means of resisting this remarkable new plague. I say remarkable because this strain works with an efficiency we have not seen in the history of the Empire. This plague, now making its way through the city of Dunwall, is unrivaled in its effectiveness. I have studied it within the blood of those so afflicted, and it is nearly perfect. Elegant, in fact. 
And while it is true that Piero's remedy and Sokolov's elixir are known to protect the body against the plague equally, my own has properties not fully understood which relate to the mind itself and the spirit. And it is in this way that my formula wins out. Here is where one should pay attention to this contest. For you see, Sokolov's elixir, with its emphasis on the brute animal body, is a crass goo better suited for livestock. The subtle and secret variants in the key ingredients making up Piero's remedy ensure that it works on the higher functions that separate humankind from the mindless blue-jawed hagfish swimming the Wenhaven River. Okay. I like... You know, this is... This is like if you've ever read about the whole, um, this, uh, what was it called? The, the energy war, power war, something like that. Um, where it's, um, Nikola Tesla versus, uh, Alva Edison, kind of like their competition. It's the same style of talk about, oh no, my stuff is, you know, the other stuff, yeah, it may work, but, uh, you know, mine is, is still better in some other way. Um, start charts, southern skies. I mean, you know, like if, for example, the electric chair was an invention by Edison to, um, to kind of bad mouth um, alternating current, which was what Tesla was and Westinghouse were mostly using, um, different from discrete current, which Edison had, uh, first used, of course, because it's the more obvious, you know, natural solution at first. Um, and so he kind of, um, he, he wanted people to think, oh, alternate current is this dangerous stuff, and the safe stuff is the discrete current. And so he invented a machine for killing people, and he actually suggested calling the process to Westinghouse someone, kind of, to really badmouth his name. And, like, this whole style of comp competition that they had back then, that's what this is informed by, and I love it. Oh, okay, we just got money. I thought this would be like a blueprint that we can use. Perfect. Thank you, Cole. Here, see? The Assassin's Mask. You're a wanted man, so everyone in the city knows your face. But this mask will mean terror to them. If you just... Hold still, fit must be precise. There. Can you see normally? Center lens out of alignment. There. Better now? I could create more for you. Upgrades for your gear, weapons, munitions. But our situation here is desperate. Scavenge the city for valuables, and I will resell them on the black market. That should give us the money to craft the things you need. Tell me what I can make for you. Okay, I'm I'm a bit confused. I've I've been confused about his mask from the beginning. Like if if you in in the second game you have the choice of playing as Corvo or someone else. And um if you play as Corvo, he he uses this mask again. And the other person just uses a, like, a, uh, a handkerchief in front of their mouth, basically. A bandana bound around their face. Um, which seems, you know, like, oh yeah, it's there's dust storms in the city and things like that. So, of course, people might, you know, put on a bandana to protect themselves. It kind of sounds a lot more natural. Whereas here in this... Like, like this assassin mask sounds really crazy and he sounds like he would really stand out. So I wonder, like, is that, is that an established thing in this world? Are there, you know, is there the job of an assassin and they have particular kind of masks? 
or is it more um well if you walked around with your real face people would recognize you as you whereas if you walk around with this mask you'll still stand out but people will go like okay that looks like a dangerous scary person i don't want to double cross them and there might be doubt that it's whether it's you corvo or someone else so that's what i'm kind of wondering here like what what does this mask mean um you know is it more a batman thing where it's just like oh there corvo has disappeared and also this stranger with a scary mask has shown up and then you go like you hear a few stories or there was this guy with a scary mask and he killed people or something and then people will go okay i'm i'm not going to cross him um but just the connection to corvo will not be there so I wonder if it's that, or, or what the idea behind it is, or if it's just, you know, as you say, like a... If we're just pretending to be a member of the Assassin's Guild who happened to work around like that, walk around like that, and you just go, well, as long as he's not killing me, I'm good, <laughs> you know? Let's have a look. Okay. Okay, so he is like the vendors, I guess. So we can ma have him make crossbow bolts, bullets, spring razors, a rewire tool, and a grenade. And we can have him make upgrades. Okay, crossbow accuracy upgrade. 750 crossbow range, crossbow reload, combat sleep dart. Sleep dart sedative effect is immediate, even in combat. I mean, that would be kind of nice, but that's 600, so that would be the only upgrade we do. Whereas if we do the accuracy and range updates, um, we'd be at 750. And so we'd have around 200 left to buy something else. Mask optics allows you to magnify your view. Press left alt to zoom. It's also not bad. Bolt capacity, grenade capacity, spring razor, and bone charm. I think I'll go with crossbow accuracy and range for now. Oh no, wait, actually accuracy, I think accuracy was fine. So let's try range and optics for now. Okay. Now we have 133 coins left. And so now we can buy about four sleep bolts, I guess. And that's it. But let's try that, I guess. Let's spend the rest of our money. On sleep bolts because I at least in the previous game those were hard to get I advise that you get some sleep your life will get even more difficult soon you should rest while you can I'd like to look around for a while before I head Very down well. you know best let me know if you need anything more Read the craftsman tutorial. Piero can craft and upgrade gear with the money you collect. Bringing collected blueprints to Piero will allow you to unlock new upgrades to buy. These services can be accessed by talking to Piero at any time. All right. I find it interesting. Um, I expected um, Sokolov to be here, not Piero. Sokolov technology and the new age. Except from a recent book detailing Sokolov's machines. One of the advantages of Sokolov's te te technologies is that they share the same magnetic socket for the tanks of processed whale oil they use as fuel. When a tank is exhausted, another can be plugged into place with ease. 
and the process is simple enough that any common workman or even the lower guardsman of the city watch can handle the task. This applies to the arc pylon and wall of light security systems as well as the powered carriages used for transport by those few who are wealthy enough to afford them. The only obvious downside of Sokolov's designs is the volatility of the tanks themselves. A few incidents have occurred, resulting in damage to property or bodily harm whenever one of the tanks has exploded. Okay, that's good uh, information. for uh, later stealthing, of course. Piero's door to nowhere. The door to nowhere has proven to be a safety hazard, but for me this project is an endless source of inspiration. With the proper application of energies, I believe I can transform the door frame into a window of sorts, one that will allow a traveler to cover the distance from my workshop to some distant, arbitrary point in a single step. Currently the step leads to a sheer drop, straight down into the courtyard, but in time it will bridge gaps that will boggle the mind. Such work is many years away to be sure, but if I survive this plague I'm sure to succeed. Okay. Interesting. Ooh, a trunk. Mm, nothing in there though. Lots of clothing, I guess. Oh, failed experiments. We missed that last time. Excerpt from a series of lectures on natural philosophy by Piero Joplin. Of course I have attempted to improve upon Sokolov's designs. Of course, and why not? After all, it is likely that his thinking was influenced in some small way by our time together at the Academy. We are all part of a community, striving to unknot the mysteries of the cosmos. Even those among us who possess the greatest minds are often led to a fruitful line of consideration by, how does one say it, our intellectual subordinates. Sokolov is no exception to this, despite the glamour of genius he has cast over the aristocracy. And further, it is true that many of my experiments have failed. No need to gossip about it behind my back, in your social clubs, and in the very chambers of the Academy itself. Great ambition requires risks. You may laugh now at my door to nowhere, but some day you will not. Your children will likely see it as commonly as you see the electric lamps lighting our streets at night. But a few short years ago you would have laughed at Sokolov's arc pylon or wall of light. Your laughter, your condescending smiles, they are nothing but evidence of your own limited imagination. I kind of feel like he has a problem stepping out of the shadow of Sokolov. Oh, that's a nice view. Tell me what I can make for you. Ah, okay, not now, sorry. Audiograph. The Academy teaches that absurd idea that the energy in whale oil arises from the maintain life functions at extreme ocean depths. The pressure in the cold are too much to endure without it. I speculate that a human being might, by a process of adaptation, produce high energy humors in the body. I could build a tank that would slowly increase pressure on a subject over a long period of time and then observe them for years if need be to see if the formulation of energetic substances develop. Surely the Empress would be able to furnish me with facilities, subject to the necessary legal amnesty. Hmm, okay. My break with the Academy was explosive, for lack of a better word. I had to rebuild from scratch, but so much the better. I was sick of using tools made by lesser men. Tell me what I can make for you. Oh, okay, no. We can't talk to you, I forgot that. It's interesting that Corvo doesn't have a voice in this game. Uh oh 
We can't steal his key from him. Whoops. Alright, I guess we've explored everything here. I kind of wonder what kind of uh, guy he is. Attention all citizens, curfew extends from sundown to sunrise unless you are otherwise authorized. Violators will be subject to interrogation and detained when necessary. Remember, the boldest measures are the safest. It's interesting, you've, you've had the same kind of announcements in the second game. Um, or you will have, I guess, chronologically from this point. Oops. Hi. Lydia. Oh. Hi. You must be Corvo. I am Lydia, at your service. Your room is upstairs and ready. When they told me who it was, well, I thought you'd be older, like the Admiral. Oh, okay, she's... So they mentioned Lydia, the, the other two people. She has a key, but we can't Attention, take it. Citizens of Dunwall, the old port district has been added to the evacuation list. The weeper count for the month of seeds has increased. The Lord Regent has decreed that plague ordinances will remain in effect through the month of rain. Stay alert and stay loyal. Litany on the White Cliff. Excerpt from a series of Overseer invocations by High Overseer Abram Templeton. Okay, so that was an older High Overseer before the one here tried to kill us, I guess. And I say, t and actually killed Emily. Uh, uh, not Emily, uh, Jessamine. And I say to you, brothers, it is here that we make our stand as a righteous force against the growing darkness. It is here that we unite against the spirits of the unknown that would drag us screaming into the night never to return to our homes, to our families. Together we will serve as a rod to those who would stray from the herd, for the foggy gray wastes of the outsider. We will burn a bright fire with our virtuous actions so that others will not lose their way. And to those who choose to wander beyond the walls of our homes in far places, we will strike at them swiftly before they whisper to their neighbors, filling their hearts with strangeness and doubt. Okay, so the outsider... We've met the outsider in the seventh game. I, I think we will meet him here as well, so I don't want to say much more than that. Just that, you know, the outsider is not the concept, but an actual person. Um, and here from this description, I think... The overseers seem to kind of see him, see him, you know, almost like an analogy to the devil or something, which is interesting. We didn't really get that much detail. Okay, that part is blocked. Also something we're familiar with, and I guess... Yeah, okay, that entire stretch is blocked. Interesting. The sound is a little weird, like these background noises that you hear here... River ...seem very... ...landing in the distillery district due to risk of infectious contact. Violators will be taken to the flooded district for treatment and rehabilitation. Which was where they disposed the bodies. So my guess is it's not treatment and rehabilitation. Harpooner songs. 
What will we do with a drunken whaler? What will we do with a drunken whaler? What will we do with a drunken whaler? Early in the morning. Feed him to the hungry rats for dinner. Feed him to the hungry rats for dinner. Feed him to the hungry rats for dinner. Early in the morning. Way hey and up she rises. Way hey and up she rises. Way hey and up she rises. Early in the morning. Slice his throat with a rusty Cleaver, slice his throat with a rusty cleaver, slice his throat with a rusty cleaver, early in the morning. Stuff him in the sack and throw him over, stuff him in the sack and throw him over, stuff him in the sack and throw him over, early in the morning. Way, hey, and up she rises, way, hey, and up she rises, way, hey, and up she rises, early in the morning. Okay, they kept the lyrics. Good to know. That reminds me, um, you probably heard this uh, Wellerman song, which is like a sea shanty that was pretty popular a few months ago. Yes, very much so, but no need to fear. He is here to work with our master. People say he's not the Emperor. Of course he didn't. People are foolish and believe whatever they're told. Okay. If the Admiral trusts him, then so will I. Do not attempt to house or care for a friend or family member who shows signs of blood on their face and chest area. The only way to help them is to bring them to the city watch. They will be taken to the flooded district for treatment. I don't like this whole idea of uh, taken to the flooded district for treatment. Thanks for this motivational song. It's... It's a bit darker. I mean, the you know, like if you go for all the verses of Drunken Sailor, um, some of them get a little dark. Some of those pranks, um, but you know, they're still pranks. You kind of go like, okay, that's the kind of rougher pranks that maybe sailors in the I don't know eighteen hundreds or whenever that song is originally from, um maybe even earlier, um, you know, would would play on another. It's kind of, it's, you, you know, today you would say it's a bit reckless, but it's, uh, you know, there's no life endangered, really. I mean, the worst thing is, you know, like shave his belly with a rusty razor is, you know, that's going to be painful, but that's about it. Maybe if you do it wrong, uh, you might get blood poisoning or something, but, um, you know, that can go well. Whereas put him in a bag and throw him overboard? What? What? He'll drown. Um, and the whole, what was it? I think the most dangerous one is the one you hear the least, which is, what is it? Um, like, put him in the bed with a captain's daughter or something like that. And, you know, of course, at that time... When something like that happened, it might could have been that the captain would just uh, have him keel hauled or something to protect his his daughter's honor or something like that. Um, you know, but there's still a chance that maybe he'll just get fired and that's it. You know, it still seems like a mean spirited prank, but a prank that can work. And maybe you know where they can clear up. Oh, he was just drunk. We stuck him in her bed and just so he'd be embarrassed for a few hours, you know, so it's all kind of harmless. But these pranks, slit his throat and, and things like that, that's too dark. <laughs> Excerpt from the travel journal of a whaler in his final years, A Gaffer's Tale, Volume 2, or A Gaffer's Final Passage. After more than a quarter of a century, I am done with whaling, too broken to continue. I've seen all the corners of the isles and made more coin than most men see in a lifetime. But it's all gone. I've lived through an emperor and watched his daughter take the throne. Fair young empress she was, but slain so young. Everything beautiful comes to die. I've eaten in every port of the known world and sailed in the loneliest waters you could imagine. I've seen the cliffs around Pandicia. Even the best of it doesn't give me an ounce of joy. 
The years come back across my dreams as a line of butchered bodies, long, sleek, and singing among the waves under the moonlight, only to be speared by ugly, weather-scarred men who'd knife each other for a good pair of boots. Each year I had less time to come home. My tongue forgot the language of small chatter, and those who lived in the cities thought me odd. My sister Nina hardly knew what to say to me during our visits. When she lost her business to the Lord Regent's crooked barrister, I was a hundred miles east of Morley, gaff-hand frozen from the sleet as we tracked the first bull whale we'd seen in months. I helped her as much as I could, but Nina died in the early days of the plague. None of it mattered. If I'm jaded and bitter, it's because this industry has taken away my dreams. The world has beaten me. That's not very pleasant. The Shadow on Bitterleaf. Except for the longer work of fiction, finding my way by the feeble light of the dying fire, I saw her working. A large needle moved in her hand, following precise esoteric patterns, knots and loops of seamstress craft from ancient days. Beneath her needle, his body clenched and shuddered, shaking the wooden table. A morbid fascination pushed me closer, until she turned her blank face toward me, resting the needle in his flesh. With a refined tone, she addressed me. So you are the lover, I presume? You too have been unfaithful, and it is now your turn to be mended. That sounds scary. That sounds more like a Syrian kill serial killer. The Young Prince of Tivia excerpt from a theater play. Lord Nathan Boyle, shaking with outrage. How dare you, sir, clothed so in my very home? I should hand you over to the watch, depraved Tivian. Prince Kalisar moving closer. That's a harsh welcome, f welcome for royalty, my lord. Your daughter treated me with much more hospitality. Alas, she has gone out for the evening, leaving me all alone. Lord Nathan Boyle, stammering, studying the younger man before him. What are you doing? Leave this house. Go back to your frozen wasteland, pale rascal. Prince Kalisar, smiling coyly, reaching out. No need for anger between us, Lord Boyle. Is it so wrong for me to be here? As I've proven, I've developed an affinity for you and your family. Lord Nathan Boyle, gasping. Oh my, Kalisar, your skin is so warm. It burns. <laughs> okay. I didn't expect the, what was it called, uh, the Lusty Argonian Maid? <laughs> um, I guess this is the Dishonored equivalent of that. Unless you are otherwise authorized. Violators will be subject to interrogation and detained when necessary. Remember, the boldest measures are the safest. Remember, the boldest measures are the safest. Hello? Anyone home? Oh. A Gaffer's Tale Volume 1. Or A Gaffer's Early Adventures. My sister Nina and I left Tivia together, saying goodbye to our aunt, the woman who had raised us since childhood. Leaving behind our home city of Yarrow and the cold but beautiful white landscapes we had always known, we boarded a ship for Dunwall. Our parents had left us with a sizable inheritance, and we spent half of this getting to the capital city and establishing a small import shop dedicated to Tivian furs. Once I'd helped Nina establish the business, I was free to pursue my dream. Signing on with a whaling ship was the most exciting thing I'd ever done, and I saw it as a means to an end. Some day I would captain my own crew, and eventually own a fleet of similar vessels. With tears in her eyes, Nina kissed me farewell, and I did not see her again for many months. As an apprentice to the gaffer, I got to see the tracking and killing of the great beasts up close. Nothing had ever fired my spirit so as the wind and pounding waves, racing after a wounded whale being pulled by a skein of cables embedded in his thick flesh. I changed more in those, f those first seven months than I had in the previous seven years. Wailing was beginning to put its mark on me, so that Nina barely recognized me when I returned, tanned and sinewy with muscles, weather creases already wrinkling the corner of my eyes. 
but she could see that I was filled with joy, having found my purpose. So that's how it started. And then he got a lot less optimistic. Excerpt from Book on Naval History, Admiralty and the Fleet. While each of the Isles has some form of naval fleet, none is more in lead than that of Crystal, with its long, proud history of great ships and the admirals who command them. Boys come of age in the cities of Crystal, hoping to someday captain such a ship, and family dynasties are made by those captains who track down infamous pirates or crush seditious uprisings, as during the Morley insurrection. In time of war and peace, Crystal continues to innovate at sea. The ship designs of Anton Sokolov himself now represent the highest standard in the whaling trade, allowing crews to haul their kill up over the deck and begin their butchery and processing, even as the ship returns to Dunwall. The crews can be seen working on their latest whale as the ship moves slowly up the Renhaven River, coming to dock with one of the powerful warehouse companies such as the Greaves Whaling House. Suspended in the rigging overhead and backlit by the setting sun, the silhouette of one of these creatures makes a moving sight as it cruises to its final resting place in the indust industrial heart of the capital city. Havelock Log Entry 1 It has been days since our men were dispatched to stash weapons for Corvo in the old sewer. They have not returned, so I can only hope that they su succeeded in getting the packages delivered. Piero spent considerable time and resources making those things. If I could find a way to mass-produce them, the Dunwall Navy would secure its place as the dominant force on the globe. But back to Corvo. Can he actually break out of Coldridge, and if so... Will he make his way here? I personally give him odds of one in five. Okay, so the dead guy that looked too good, um, too, too rich, that was probably one of the people he sent. Now we know that they never returned. I guess got attacked by the rats. Fanfic. <laughs> yes, exactly. Log entry one four. It seems we have moved Martin's improvisations have borne fruit. The former bodyguard has been freed and is en route to the staging location. With Pendleton's voting block and my military connections, all we've lacked is the ability to project lethal force in a controlled manner against a previously inaccessible... Ah, to the point, we need a man who can kill the bastards for us. Corvo is more than capable of that, I have no doubt. End law. Is this off? Switch. That's a classic in voice logs going like, is this thing off? Sometimes you, you hear something else. That's interesting. So that's basically why they freed Corvo. The old because they know he can and will kill. The weeper count for the month of has oh, hi, Menagerie. How's it going? Oh, and... Oh, Justice Pirate. Hi. Is there a raid? Hello. How are you people doing? Rob Steady, thank you for the follow. Um, who else do we have? Rookie, RNG God, hello, Addy Cakes, only noob aimer, okay. Yeah, I'm a noob aimer too, so generally I just don't aim, if that works. Um, who else is here? Addy Cakes is following, thank you very much. Um, Solace, hello. How are you people all doing? We're you're lucky. Um I'm playing quite slowly here. Um so we're pretty early on in Dishonored 1. We've only just been uh kicked out of our uh cushy spot as uh, the Empress's favorite person. Um Sorry, let me just make that scroll. This game is a little awkward in that it's old enough that if I alt-tab out, it sort of disappears and freezes. 
So sorry if the screen goes a little wonky. Um, it should be fine now. How the game is going? I'm loving it so far. I've, I have to say, I, I played it a little backwards. I played the base game of Dishonored 2 previously. So I have a vague idea of where some of the bits in this game are going. Um, and I loved that. And then I went, okay, now that I know that I like the series, I should actually start at the beginning. And also since some of the DLC obviously seem to refer back to Dishonored 1 and its DLC. So now I'm, I'm going back and playing Dishonored 1. And so far I'm loving it. You know, it's, you can tell that it's an older game, like the graphics aren't quite as fancy, but actually they, they did so well, you know, it's, it feels um, like an art style decision and not like, oh, the engine just couldn't do any better. So, so that was really, really, uh, that makes it really enjoyable. Um, it, yeah, it, I, I'm loving this game. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It has a lot of story and things, um, and you can do a lot of exploring, which is always something for me. What times of types of game I play? Um, well, um, what types of game do I play? Well, I'm, I'm mainly an adventure fan. A while ago, I played the game Myst, which is like an exploratory puzzle game. Um, and that's basically, that's sort of my ideal game, you know, like LucasArts adventures or first-person puzzle adventures. Um, I also enjoyed the Portal games, um, which are just, you know, amazing. But of course, uh, some of that is quite fast-paced in Portal. And so um, uh, I, I've recently kind of taken to stealth games like Dishonored like um what's the other one called uh, like the assassin's creed games the new ones where you know you can you can play them kind of ex as exploring games you can play them on on easy or in story mode or something and and i don't mind stealth gameplay but i'm not into combat so um that's why i'm I'm really enjoying the Dishonored games because you can play them stealthily. Um, and basically, you will see that, and some people will probably find that horrific, um, that uh, in this game, basically, when someone spots me, I go back and, and load the game. Um, because um, it's really... I'm interested in, you know, stealthing my way through and exploring the area. I'm not really interested in in combat and and not that much in those kinds of game mechanics. I'm much more interested in exploring a story. Hard care gaming as we call that here sometimes. Do you like Dark Souls? Um I've never played Dark Souls. It never really seemed attractive to me because it's all about, you know, those boss fights and things. And I'm really just like I do combat and boss fights, but it's for me, it's, you know, that's an obstacle between me and the next bit of the story I want. So the less of that I get, the less, um, uh, the more I like a game. So Dark Souls, I don't think it's really my jam. I've played a little bit of, um, uh, what was the Star Wars Dark Souls-like game called? Um, Star Wars Jedi, Jedi Fallen Order. I've played a little bit of that, and it's okay. But, you know, like, I, I actually constantly f find myself complaining, why can't I, now that I've managed uh, going here, why can't I just save? And then if I stupidly fall down, I can just go back to the save point and don't have to do the three previous puzzles too. Um, and that's already on easy mode, where they have a lot more save points than they usually have. Um, so yeah, um, and that's why, um, so yeah, Dark Souls is probably not my kind of game. Like, I'm into, you know, Myst, Vanishing, Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Walking Simulators are fine with me. Any games that have a lot of story and where the mechanics aren't that annoying, or ideally where the mechanics are slow and puzzly, so... That's kind of the kind of game I play. 
Are you playing with a low difficulty? I started a playthrough of another game with a difficulty on the lowest setting for the sake of being able to just get the story. Uh, yes, I am. Here I'm playing on easy, which is the lowest difficulty. I actually considered Attention. for a moment of going to normal, but the thing here is, like, I love stealth games. I do not like combat. And so, um, if... For example, Assassin's Creed Valhalla actually had um, uh, had a uh, separate settings for combat difficulty and stealth difficulty, and so there I went okay, st stealth highest difficulty, combat lowest, because that's what I like. I like you know sitting somewhere up top, finding the right position to go to, picking off one enemy after the other. That's fun for me, you know, like being more strategic, I guess, in that case. Um, because I can take my time. And I don't like having to do things fast. Um, uh, but in most games like here, it's you say, okay, I'm switching to easy or something. I think Dishonored 2 had a few like advanced difficulty settings where you could actually adjust something separately but like ideally in in these games i would just like a setting that says if you're spotted you're dead and you immediately go back to the previous save point or something um that would be my ideal one can you suggest me some adventure games oh only noob that's a good question well um there's a bunch i've played like of course there's the old classics you know, you have Monkey Island, the series. You have um, Sam and Max. You have uh, Maniac Mansion Day of the Tentacle. I have to say, uh, Day of the Tentacle is a really fun game. Maniac Mansion being the first game is very clunky. And I found it, what I have played of it so far, and I have never finished it, I found quite difficult to pull off as someone you know from today especially since it doesn't have mouse over so you have to click l examine then click randomly on the screen and then either it will say this is nothing or it will say this is a faucet or something you know so the usual lucas arts you just mouse over something and you know whether it's interactable or not doesn't exist in that game yet um and so um, I can definitely, like Day of the Tentacle, I think is the pinnacle of that technology. It has great puzzles, it has great animation, it's funny as hell. Um, it is just balanced gameplay. The puzzles are not too complicated and not too bizarre. There's a few where, you know, like you need to be familiar with American pop culture and uh, the Founding Fathers and things like that. But uh, that's about it uh, with regard to difficulty and to some cliches. Um, um, then, of course, um, Telltale made uh, the early Telltale games were point-and-click adventures. So they did sequels to uh, Sam and Max three seasons, so roughly three games. Thanks for the follow, only noob. Um, they did... what else did they do? Um... Uh, they did uh, a Monkey Island sequel game, like one season. They always did like five-part games seasons. That was also pretty nice. Um, uh, so yeah, the Wallace and Gromit, yeah, Wallace and Gromit is kind of cute. Um, I have to say I couldn't quite get myself to finish that one yet. Um, it felt like too much made for children for me in some way but I should probably go back and dig out my copies back to the future back to the future was I have to say it wasn't as good as the others but it's still a decent game and it's it's so true to um, uh, the you know the back to the future franchise that you just go okay if you're in any way if you love that movie and are looking for a point-and-click adventure, um, uh, definitely the Back to the Future point-and-click adventure is pretty nice. Um, that's actually on my long list of games 
to play. What happens if you shoot the maid? Do you want me to try that? That would be rude. Um, I'm, I'm guessing I probably... Either I scare her or at least I get... Uh, or it might be that I get dinged as a bad person in this game, actually. They, they have a bit... Well, we can try it. We can do an experiment. Um, uh, other point-and-click adventures, new ones, um, um, is, uh, there is one called Gibbous, which is kind of a funny Cthulhu myth mythos game. And that's, it's as bizarre as it sounds, and it's really well done, and it's, you can tell that they were fans of classic adventure games. So, um... I can definitely recommend that game. What was the other one? Oh yeah, the Yesterday series of point-and-click adventures. I think that's a French studio. Um, Yesterday is not a funny game. It's more a fantastic game. Um, basically about someone who has no memory. Okay, here goes... No oh no, I think I can't shoot her. Oh no, I can. Ooh, okay. Okay, now we know. It's game over. <laughs> the loyalist conspiracy is dissolved. <laughs> was yesterday the slight, slight, slightly tortury one? Yes, that one. It was like with old cults and things like that. I don't want to say too much about um, yesterday. Okay, interesting. So if you shoot one of your friends, it's game over. Uh, you know, makes sense. I would have, like in this game, you actually sometimes, or at least in, the, in Dishonored 2, you sometimes had enough freedom to kind of um, do, do some less than good things. We've already been here. Okay, so which, these rooms I think we haven't looked around in yet. Aren't she God? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Inch mouth decor plate. Oh, we can sell that for a hundred bucks. I guess. Oh, hello, sir. Uh. Hello. Pleased to meet you, Master Corvo. I saw you at court in happier days, but you might not remember. I was once a close ally to the Lord Regent, Hiram Burroughs, back when he was just the spy master. He's one manipulative bastard, I can tell you that. All right. I'm, I'm kind of wondering whether, you know, like, them pointing out that he used to be a friend of his kind of makes me mistrustful of him. There's something distinguished about you, Corvo. Was there nobility back in your family line? I wouldn't be surprised. I like this faux British royalty thing that this game has going on. But you're only if you're into the sneak around and pick off baddies from the shadows kind of games, I'd suggest checking out the Sniper Elite franchise. Okay, I guess I'll have a peek at that. I also like, um, there's some interesting fun mechanics. I recently started playing a little bit of uh, uh, Titanfall. And it's such, th there's some really fun game mechanics in there. Um, so th that's more the, the itch that Portal scratches for me. Um, nobody saw that, right? Hi, miss. Titanfall is fun, can get hectic, yeah. I'm, I, I, last I played, I got stuck at one spot where you kind of had to wall run in a very specific sequence. Um, and yet yeah, just got stuck there, couldn't pull it off in the right speed, and that's always the, the problem with games like that, I get Not demotivated. Close. I'll never be Emperor. Not close enough, I'll never be Emperor. Yeah, he's, that's kind of... He went straight over to the Lord Regent's side after the Empress died. Easiest thing to do. But to me, a noble birth requires a sense of loyalty.
yeah, he seems, you know, like, I'm, I'm not sure, like, he seems to, you know, be very fascinated and wants to be someone, you know, wants to have power. Um, but, you know, maybe he's just, you know, basically lawful evil, I guess would be the term. And then, you know, you can deal with him, at least. My furnishings have been installed at last with no small amount of complaining by that antiquated boatman. The others have no idea what it's like to suffer as I have. Speaking of which... Wallace! Please breathe two bottles of Dunwall Red, never mind which, and fetch a clean glass. <sighs> well... I'll begin again tomorrow. Yeah, he doesn't really seem like the the guy you want to have as emperor as well. I don't know why he's with us. Stealth and parkour are different skills. It's not always good to require both. Yeah. Ruined since the plague struck. These poor weepers moaning and bleeding from the eyes. They say there's no cure for the plague once it advances that far. Hmm. Terrible. Hmm. Terrible. Oh, by the way, you don't need that, right? Mm, another 30 coins. Um, okay, bye. <laughs> Hi. I'm sorry it's so dark. We can't risk being seen. It is a bit romantic, though, isn't it? The second floor. Oh, at first I read second look and went like, what? Please follow me to your quarters. I wouldn't have guessed to go up there. There's just this big arrow telling me where my bed is. Um, but yeah, it's it's exactly that. It's sometimes, y you know, there's so many things in a game, and sometimes you're just good at one of the things. And then the question is, you would really want to play that other half of the game, but you can't because the first half blocks you from it. And that's always sad, and that's why I like games with uh, very detailed. This is your room. It was chosen to give you privacy. I understand you'll need your rest. Thank you. Um. And so you know th that's what what makes a lot of modern games work, and why I'm I always groan when I hear game developers go like, no, our game was built to be difficult and you should play it the way I intended. But, you know, if you know someone, for example, who has, uh, for example, there are people who have muscle issues and, for example, you know, maybe can play with thumbs, but that's it. And so if your game requires them to push three buttons at once or push two buttons down and move and, and press alternate between other buttons or something. Some people just cannot do that. Or, uh, you know, also people have different hand shapes. So sometimes it's just with a controller or with a mouse or on a keyboard. Sometimes I just cannot contort my hand to push the same. And I'm, I'm basically a healthy person, but even I have that problem sometimes. Um, and so... You know, you know, if you say, well, you should do difficult, yeah, but not every person plays at life at the same difficulty setting. And so, um, and, and you know, like, games these days are expensive to make. And so if you can get, you know, if you create a game like this, Dishonored, which is initially intended to be a combat and stealth game with a big story, and you invest a lot of money into making this, and now you can go and say, hey, if we add a setting that, for example, takes out the combat or just makes it so easy that it might as well not be there, then we can sell it to even more people. Because then people like Uli, you know, who is into walking simulators, into story games, and maybe into a little bit of stealth, will suddenly go, you know, this is close enough to a game I like and I can play, I'm physically able to play and then I'll buy that too and suddenly you have a 
much larger target audience. And that means you can build a game with a much larger budget and still recoup your investment. And that's what some game developers just don't get in this weird sense of games have to be a challenge and you're just not good enough a person if you uh, um, if you are not interested in challenges like that. Um, and yeah, so... Here we are. Um, and so, yeah, uh, that's basically... Um, th th those are really great games that account for that and go, there's no use in locking out people. You can always say, you know, if you turn off this game feature, you're not getting achievements or, you know, you're getting different achievements like you know if you really want to to, to show um uh you know in some some way oh this person actually managed to do that original challenge give them achievement it's fine but um you know let the others play the game and maybe even give them achievements for the way they played the games you know just saying you know you you did all the chapters and you finished the game or something that's um, you know, so everyone can enjoy your games, and then it's fine. And then, you know, like, your writer will be happy that there's, instead of 50,000, there's 100,000 people now who explored their story. And yes, the combat game designer will maybe go, oh, only 50,000 people actually played with my combat. But, you know, at least it was 50,000 people, and every everyone will remember this game positively. So if I go to a friend who loves combat and says, I loved this Dishonored game, you should try that too, then suddenly it will be 50,001 people doing the combat. But this game looks really nice. Like, as soon as you're in there a little bit, um, it just looks good. Um, it's it's really aged well like you 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 can tell you know like yeah it's a bit chunky um you know the water effects are a bit a bit rough or something but it's it's still you know it holds together i love that about this game as i said before like monkey island 4 is the opposite example where you say like that 3d engine wasn't ready for a game like monkey island at that time it had to be a game like Grim Fandango that had been designed, where the characters had been designed with that engine in mind. And they just didn't do that, and that's why it didn't feel so good. Okay, so I guess we've explored around all we could, so let's have that prescribed nap and see what happens. I'll go to sleep now. Alright, that was a short nap. I guess we have restless leg syndrome or something. What's that noise? Whoops. Wait, where did our door go? Um, something's not right, exactly. All right. But yeah, this game, you know, this has several difficulties, so it's actually, at least for me, not a problem. But, for example, for someone who has trouble holding a mouse button or something, some of the abilities, 
in this game that I know we will be getting. Okay. That water is going the wrong way. Hello, um, I'd like to return my physics. They're upside down. And that's a buoy in the middle of the sky. Cool. <laughs> it looks gorgeous, so it's a cool idea. It's it's become like a almost a cliche in dream sequences. Like you've seen that in um Star Wars the Old Republic had it was it what what some other RPG I played had it as well. Um uh, it was in the Spider-Man game. Um so there's a lot of games now who do dream sequences like this. I mean, it's, you know, it lends itself to a game map because you don't have to build the entire game map and if someone falls off, you know, like, you, you, you basically don't have to build railings because, again, it's an island. It's, from a game design standpoint, this is perfect. Because you don't have to come up with an excuse for why the player can't just walk off into the scenery. There, immediately they know where they have to go um, what to find. Yep, your room also always looks like that when you wake up. Very relatable. Who are you to tell the water what, what is the right way, huh? Maybe the water wanted to fall upwards and put a lot of effort into it. Okay, I... Okay, sorry, water. Um, I'm not going to complain anymore. I still want to return those physics, though. Control, perhaps? That was a dream from start to end. Yeah... Yet, yeah, Control had uh, similar areas as well, you're right. Hello, Corvo. Your life has taken a turn, has it not? The Empress is dead. Her precious daughter Emily is lost somewhere in the city, and you will play a pivotal role in the days to come. For this, I have chosen you and drawn you into the void. I am the outsider, and this is my mark. There are forces in the world and beyond the world. Great forces that we call magic. And now, these forces will serve your will. Use this newfound power. My gift to you. Come find me. Power. Blink. Press right mouse button to execute a fast and stealthy forward dash through the world. You can also use it to move upward, but the distance is reduced. Aiming at ledges will allow you to blink forward and climb up. Hold right mouse button to target your destination with precision. A blue sphere indicates that you should reach your destination. A blue arrow indicates that you will climb up when you reach your destination. Okay. That seems vaguely familiar. Just have a look around at least. You're in the midst of playing Control. Very cool storytelling and you love the brutalist architecture throughout. It's so great, isn't it? I also love what they... You know, like the destructible scenery? It's not you know, that's the problem. Like, game development-wise, it's very difficult to make destructible scenery. A lot of games, you know, have tricks where basically, you know, you're just sitting on four boxes and uh, they're invisible and the actual scenery that you see has nothing to do with where you can walk and where you can't. And uh, that's why uh, Minecraft, for example, needs such crazy CPU power comparatively, you know, for a simple looking game. Because, like, you can take away any block or add any block. So they have to be very fine-grained with their you know, hit detection and things like that. Um, and almost have to kind of implement gravity and physics. Whereas in, in games like this, you know, it could just be a shorthand. There's basically just one area where you can... Uh, be 
and so you don't actually need physics that much. You know, like there's only one floor in many cases. Um, but what they did in control to kind of, when you damage something, to kind of, like they take apart the material and marked everything up, and then you see like uh, uh, rebar and, and everything like that inside the holes when you take apart um, concrete but when it's wood it looks different and when there's paper flying around again it's different you know they kind of it's it's an amazing illusion I love it in control and then you know just the the feel of the power in control is uh, is very cool I actually played control on stream as well and it's of course that story you know like the x-files or or so style okay Okay, I guess we can zoosh over there, okay. Okay, and like in the second game, this recharges, that's good. That's not a place I want to be. You have to rub my failure in my face. Fallen letter. You cannot save her. Okay, just written over and over. Oh. That's the Empress that uh, basically got killed on our watch. We just returned home. Piero's Spiritual Remedy. Oh, okay, so that's basically... The Mana Potion, okay, is basically... Um, what Adermeyer's solution is later. Interesting. <laughs> and leaves are falling upwards or just drifting. It's this is a very pretty design. Just the floating rocks and the buoys and everything, just that idea. Sorry. <laughs> I was wondering if they would make me walk around her or something, but nope. Oh, one thing I haven't tried. How does this feel? Okay, that works, I guess. Watch your step. Alright. I love this ability, by the way. It's just like being able to zoom across distances or something. It's also like the, the little distortion and, and things that they make are really good. Did you play Amnesia? No, I haven't played that yet. I I haven't really played many horror games, so it's... <gasps> okay, yeah, watch your step, really. Oh, and they take me all the way back. Whale oil, fish, black crab, river crust. We were told river crust is state property and not allowed to take. Okay, are these two people we should recognize? This guy looks kind of like the, the nobleman we just talked to, doesn't it? This one doesn't look too much different, though, but uh, that might just be the similar hairstyle. So yeah, um, Amnesia, that's the, what is it called? Amnesia the Dark Descent or something. It sounded very horror-y. So that's why I never really played that. Corvo, I'm very sad. They say that you're dead like mother, but I'm going to put this note in a bottle and throw it into the river because I do not believe them. 
Living here is very strange. I do not like it. So please, come for me if you can. Aww. Who are you? And you... So pretty. <laughs> like, just bits of a house. It's kind of like those little little scenes that they had in churches. I'm guessing a replay? What? I'm not quite following you here. You mean this thing here is a... Yeah, it's kind of a... a memory or something. We've had that... Uh, it's something this uh, the Dishonored series does here in these scenes. It's also something, by the way, that's also often part of that cliché well, cliché is maybe a trope, maybe. As in, you've already played it before. No, um, not Dishonored 1. I've played Dishonored 2, oddly, and then decided to go back and see what Dishonored 1 does. So, uh, not a replay. Although, you know, like, having played Dishonored 2, um... I have, um, of course, some knowledge of, you know, facts that were referenced there. Or, um, um, yeah, stuff like that. Oh, by the way, hello, Boatst. <laughs> I think we should say hello first before we start into the middle of a discussion there. Okay. Uh, now, oof. Okay, that worked. It's a bit finicky with the distance. More Adermeyer solution. Okay, they're really generous here with that. Just to know... Not Adermeyer, what is it called? Um, Piero's spiritual solution. Um, uh, so in case, in case I go across here too fast, that I can refill my mana. That's a nice game design thing to do. Ah, that's the spy master. He doesn't look too happy. Huh. Missing. Oh, that's... That looks suspiciously like Sokolov with that beard. I don't know these other two that might be the Admiral and maybe the noble who's helping us. Not sure. I don't think any of this is supposed to be Corvo. Anything else here? Which, that seems to be a big bridge. Is that the, um, the palace? Can't really make sense of the architecture here. Or is this, I think this is the palace. This might be where we arrived, went up. And this is the other building where I thought we would go across the bridge at some point, and we never did. So much for my ability of prediction. So, yeah. Again, I, I love that they went, okay, we don't have that much detail. Let's make them look painted. And that way suddenly the clunkiness becomes part of the art style and you don't notice it. It's so great. Whoops. Okay. I've seen these before and they're not nice. No, they're something different, but uh, they don't look friendly. A bit of a challenge. Okay, these people don't look very healthy.
Okay, these don't seem to be... These seem to be people on stilts. Okay. Holger Square. Okay. Oh, and they're... Yeah. They're just about dead. I guess incendiary arrows or something like that. And now I guess they're just, uh, yeah, to use blink to climb, aim the power at the edge of the roof, ledge or other high surface, and now we see that triangle thing. Or we can even land a little above. Okay. These are gorgeous stairs, though. This spot seems to be familiar, This these stairs. I think we had that in Dishonored 2 as well, this spot. Or was it in Swotor? I don't remember, but it, one of them had something similar. again with the water going upwards. Don't want to go through there. In the days that follow, your trials will be great, Corvo. Seek the ancient runes bearing my mark in the lonely places of your world, and at shrines raised in my name. These runes will grant you powers beyond those of other men. To help you find these runes, I give you this. The heart of a living thing, molded by my hands. With this heart, you will hear many secrets, and it will guide you toward my runes, no matter how they may be hidden. Listen to the heart now, and find another rune. Okay, this is interesting. So the heart... In... Equipping the heart in your left hand helps you locate bone charms or runes even through walls. The heart beats and lights up when you are facing a bone charm or rune, and it beats faster as you get closer. The heart will whisper secrets if you press the right mouse button while targeting a person or location. So the heart is in number two as well, but it's different. So this will be interesting. Like, how different is it now? This place is the end of all things. And the beginning. Uh-oh. Okay, so I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. But if you've seen me play Dishonored 2, I think you know exactly what I'm... Oh, wait. Almost missed that one. Um. Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, you will probably know what I'm thinking right now. About this heart. But I'm sure they'll... They'll let us find out in this game. It's, it's also interesting, they didn't really bother to explain so much about the bone charms and everything in the second game. Which, on one hand, I'm trying to think if that's just, you know, more modern now. Um, is it, um, you know, just, oh, we don't do... Can I go up there? Yes. Is there anything in here? Oh, yes, yeah, there's some more Adermeyers. Uh, not Adermeyer. Pieros. Um. Okay, we can't go up there. Cancel. At least that works the same way. Um. Yeah. 
yeah, um, what was I about to say? Uh, forgotten. Wonderful. I think I, I was actually trying to make a point that was halfway worthwhile instead of my usual drivel. Um, is slightly the wrong way around. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I like that. I mean, they, they generally, this, this area... <laughs> this feels really nice. Just, like, it's not disorienting, really. Like you'd maybe expect... You know, because it's just basically, you know, like, just some decoration is on the walls that should be on the floor and things, so it's... But, um... All of time's meaningless here. Neither seconds, nor centuries. That's good, because I'm taking my hell of a time here, just strolling through here. They're even reminding me, oh yeah, you have this blink ability, you might need it. Now that's kind of nice. That's good thinking. I wonder if that like came out of playtesting. That they went, okay, you can go all the way here and forget about blink, so maybe remind them how to switch between the abilities. Oh yeah, um, about the whole explaining or not explaining. Like, you don't really need to know much about this. If you've played any games before, then you'll kind of be familiar with, okay, there's some things that you can use to upgrade items in many games. Um, and, you know, just basically cur other currencies that you pick up, like regular loot, uh, that are just, you know, for buying abilities or... Uh, making some abilities better or something like that. Runes and acquiring powers. Once you've collected some runes, open the journal and go to the powers section to exchange them for powers. Runes can be collected and used to acquire supernatural powers. Dark vision. Blink. We already have. Okay, we can acquire dark vision because it costs one rune. Blink upgrade costs three runes. Okay. Possession costs three runes. Bend time costs two runes. Devouring swarm costs three runes. Wind blast. Okay. Kill enemies. That's not something we want to do. Some a swarm of rats that will attack others, then disperse after a short duration. The swarm will also consume corpses. Summons a larger swarm of rats that will attack others, then disperse after a short duration. Uh, wait. This... How do I scroll this? Oh, okay, that's just the tutorial. Ah, no. Some is a larger swarm. The swarm will also consume corpses rapidly. Okay. Sometimes that group can kill enough rats disperse the swarm. Okay, but that's all. Slows time for a short duration, completely stops time. 
Time is stopped for the duration of this power, but your movement speed is faster relatively. Bend time is useful for sneaking and assassination since your enemies are suspended in time. This power gives you time to slip past enemies and sneak away or to rush them unaware for a lethal strike. Anything you come into physical contact with is pulled into your time and moves faster briefly. Bend time is also useful for stopping projectiles in mid-air, giving you a chance to move out of the way or even to collect them. Oh, cool. That definitely looks like a power that I could use. Possession allows control of animal targets for a short duration, control of human targets for a shorter duration. Possession allows you to merge physically with an animal, such as fish or a rat, for a limited duration. You must have an unobstructed path to your target. This power is useful for stealth, enabling you to hide in small places or move through spaces normally too small for you, like water filled drainage pipes or ventilation ducts. Enemies will try to stomp you if you are possessing a rat. While possessing a hound, you can sprint fast. At level 2, you can possess humans as well. Your control of humans is limited, so combat or fast movement are not possible. Possessing a human allows you to perform simple o actions such as collecting objects or opening doors. Allies of the human you are possessing will not attack you, and security devices attuned to the human you are possessing, like the arc pile on a wall of light, will not harm you. If you are falling, possessing an animal or human on the way down will effectively break your fall. Okay, possession sounds really interesting. Bend time sounds really interesting. Blink and dark vision is, of course... See living beings through walls, including their fields of vision. That's definitely something we want. So, since that's the only one we can afford right now... Let's buy that. Press the right button to see in the dark and reveal living be beings through solid walls. You can also see their fields of view as well as a visual representation of the sounds you make. Level 2 shows you important items through walls like security devices, weapons, ammo, coins, keys or traps. Cool. Do you wish for a foreshadowing warning? I'm not sure what you mean, but in general, I don't want any uh, story spoilers or anything. Like, there's some things I know from, you know, having played Dishonored 2. Um, I mean, if if I'm, you know, like, about to go somewhere and leave something behind or something, you know, like, uh, there is a, a rune somewhere that you haven't collected yet or something, and I'm, a, uh, and, and, you know, that you can warn me about things like that if you want to. Uh, bodes but um but like please no, no story spoilers um at all if possible because i just you know i want to want to discover this and of course you know like not just if i'm like about to irreversibly do something stupid or something that would be that that's kind of the thing to warn otherwise you know let me make small mistakes it's fine um it's, it's fun to make your own mistakes sometimes. And, I mean, you know, I'm not above reloading. How you use what I have given you falls upon you, as it has to the others before you. And now I return you to your world, but know that I will be watching with great interest. It's interesting he has a much more normal voice in this game. In the second game he they put some effect on his voice. I think it's also a different voice actor um, in the second game, or at least in part of the second game, but uh, beyond that he sounds like a normal human and not like a weird being. Okay, that wasn't just a dream. 
I usually don't wake up with a sudden tattoo. Mission clues updated. Piero is an inventor who is available to craft and upgrade equipment. Piero spends most of his time in his workshop. Samuel the Boatman has smuggled you across the river from Coldridge Prison. He works for an underground movement opposed to the illegal reign of the Lord Regent and has brought you to meet the members of the organization. Yes. Not really something. Use the heart to find the rune near the Houndpits. Houndpits pub. Ah, good reminder game. Speak to Admiral Havelock. Okay. Whoops. Alright. Okay, let's see. Attention huh. Dunwall citizens. Be advised, the river crust infestation has spread downriver, as far as the river mouth and flooded district. Do not attempt to approach or destroy a river crust. Any items recovered from doing so are considered state property. Okay. Um, I guess we can now use all these skills. Oh, I can't go far enough, it seems. I was kind of hoping I could get all the way across. Ouch. That sounded way worse than the millimeter of damage it did, but... Uh, I guess it hurt, uh, so the sound was realistic. I guess it's just at that difficulty the damage isn't. Hello, can't I get up there? Hmm. Alright, let's see if that... Nope. Huh. Okay. Do not attempt to howl. Maybe we don't need to get up there. Family member who shows signs of blood on their face and chest area. The only way to help them is to bring them to the city watch. They will be taken to the flooded district for treatment. Huh. Okay. Can't get up there. What about here? That seems to work. Oh wait, let's... Um, oh, we actually have to get over there somewhere. Okay. Not sure we even need our ability for that. Yeah, it seems to be somewhere in the building. Um, hello? Hello? Yep, okay. I remember that fish that tried to eat me back there. Okay, it's over there. Do I want to take another swim? Oh, that's a cool detail, that this pipe is leaking and rusty. The water effect is a bit uh, straining the engine, apparently. Play your way, powers. The powers you obtain from the runes can be used creatively to defeat enemies or move through the environment. Blink from roof to roof, possess rats and fish, or slow time before rushing a group of enemies. Alright, yes, we kind of know that. Okay. Oh, there's barbed wire over there. And 
interesting. This looks... I don't know what these constructs are, if those are... They almost look like bridge pylons or something, but without their bridge. I guess here is a bridge. Or something not unlike it. Alright. Ugh. Okay, we can't go up there, it seems. Ugh. Okay, that wasn't super elegant, but at least it kept us sort of dry. Alright, let's see, can we get over there? Not quite, I think. Uh, yeah, we can't get back up there. I guess let's just zip over there. Detection on these rocks is uh, less than optimal. I guess if I had the possession ability, if I had saved for that, but I guess I need three for those. And I can go down in there, maybe there's something interesting there. But I guess this works, okay. This will be interesting. Okay, I guess. It's alive, but he won't use it. Why? He can't sleep in regular beds anymore. Well, that's what he says. Says he was in the Navy too long. Can you believe it? Oh. That pile of wood out there? It's a hovel he built from an old rowboat. Where does Admiral Havelock find these people, I wonder? Hmm. <laughs> interesting. I mean, it's a story you hear a lot about soldiers, and, and you know, that they're so used to, for example, sleeping on a cot somewhere in a tent outside that beds just feel wrong. And so they don't sleep well, and so they build weird beds. Well, let's get down to it. First off. I know that assassination is dark business, but sometimes good men have to do bad things to make the world right. Our purpose is clear. We want to restore Her Majesty's line by finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. To those ends, we'll hide, act in shadow, take them apart, piece by piece. Tonight, I Overseer Campbell dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an army of religious zealots. But if anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once you've eliminated him, get the journal, because we think it contains Emily's location. Recovering her is obviously critical, assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. Another thing. Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. He's one of us. And if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hound Pits. Okay. That sounds like an optional objective if I've ever heard one. Like, if you don't screw it up, he'll survive and you can bring him back. Or maybe just a body we'll find somewhere and know, okay, what this is what happened to him. I like that they have their guns just like in front of their chests like this, not like at the side. I mean, it makes sense, you know, to kind of... It's fairly easy to get and you have it in aiming height pretty quickly, I guess. <laughs> also, like, 
how huge are these hands? Like, seriously. Like, he can put his hands in front of his face and, like, really. Alright, so I guess... Oh. They haven't restocked, apparently. That's a bit awkward. Oops, I'm hungry. from Dunwall Market. I guess that are su those are supplies. Okay. Alright. Um, I don't want to stop playing yet, but I've been going for another two hours. So I think this is the point um, where we'll take another short break and uh, then we'll come back play some more of this game and maybe get started on that mission. Does that sound good to you? Well, let's let's have a quick trip down here see what that is before we do that. Okay. Free money. Not much else, though. I guess these are generators or something? I don't know. Old Port District Sewer Key. Always a bit confusing, but okay, we got 30 coins, that's something. Alright, so uh, see you in a little moment.